People love sports. You know I do. The mental, physical, emotional, and strategic test of defeating your opponent in athletic competition. But do we worship athletes, placing them on pedestals? Do we tolerate too much, giving them passing grades as children for doing mediocre work in school and allowing rape, vandalism, and cheating when they become adults? Are sports stars above the legal system? Today, sports analyst Maya Akai, host of the Maya Akai Show and co-host of the Rewind Sports 60, joins me on Counterpoint with Gerard McClendon. A Massachusetts teenager charged with sexually assaulting two of his classmates is free, a judge sentencing him to two years probation. Prosecutors had asked that David Becker, seen in court earlier this summer, serve two years in prison. According to police documents, in April, two of Becker's female classmates each told investigators they were sleeping after a house party and each woke up to the 18-year-old assaulting them separately. In an interview with police, Becker allegedly denied having any contact with one of the alleged victims and said that when the other didn't protest, he thought it was okay. In an audio recording from Becker's June plea hearing, his lawyer arguing the former high school basketball player was a good student with no previous criminal record and he was a volunteer. David has been punished publicly, privately, and internally. And incarceration and a conviction for a felony and sexual registration requirements are not what David needs. He does not need the jail door slammed on his opportunity to attend college. During sentencing, the judge sharing that the victims did not want to see Becker's life ruined over this. She says in her own words, I do not want to be responsible for ruining his life. And that is moving to the court. Wow. Our sports stars above the legal system. Thank you for watching Counterpoint with Gerard McClendon. Give us a call at 844-777-9311. You can tweet and send Facebook comments to Gerard MC. At the Counterpoint today, sports analyst Maya Akai, host of the Maya Akai Show and co-host of the Rewind Sports 60. Maya, welcome to the show. Thank you, Gerard. I'm glad to be here. You know, I've been wanting to talk to you one-on-one -on -one for probably the last five years because... Your knowledge of sports and your knowledge of the spiritual aspect of sports, as well as the psychological aspect, has always intrigued me from your radio and television appearances. So thanks for spending just a little time with us. I think this is a very relevant topic, so thank you for having me. Yes, this, this, this is awesome. So, so Maya, are, are sports stars, are they above the legal system? Do pro athletes get more chances after misbehaving? What do you think? Well, we live in a society where the culture of winning is placed above all else. We start to see this kind of behavior in high school, it matriculates into college, and then to the pros. So by the time an athlete becomes a pro athlete, we shouldn't be shocked by poor behavior because it's been allowed to grow from the very minute someone decided that they were exceptional at their sport. Mm. They've been allowed to kind of move through the system, like you said, with poor grades or behavior that's not acceptable for other people. It's a privileged group of people within our society, absolutely. So they get more freedom then. So we're saying that if, if you're the 10-year-old boy or girl that is that has better handle than the next boy or girl, if you're the 16-year-old gymnast that's better than everyone else in your region, if you're the football star who cannot be tackled, this person has more freedom, they're beyond, because they've been given privilege by the people surrounding that individual, is that what you're saying? Absolutely, from their family that holds them to hard re high, high regard and also allows the behavior to happen. Because remember, your parents can step in and pull you back at any point of time, but when a parent decides this child's on the track to be successful and they watch these behaviors unfold they watch them get poor grades they know they're not meeting the mark and they allow it to happen it starts in the home then you move it to school and of course administrators teachers the exception to the rule begins to happen so absolutely are they given that extra rope to go out and do things making the exceptions for them because of the skill set that they have I was a high school teacher for 12 years and I had the privilege of teaching high school English and um, at three separate high schools, two of them private, sometimes some of the athletes were struggling in my class. Uh, 
Did I give them better grades because of their athletic prowess and performance? No, but what I found myself doing was getting tutoring for them. Uh, spending time with them after school, making sure they maybe had a little bit more a, a time for the assignment, which is totally unfair, but I did not want to give away a grade. I was not about inflating grades, but it happens in so many occasions. Let's look at some examples. So you may be familiar with some of these names. Uh, Derek Rose, okay? And that's a whole other story because he's, he's a New York Nick now. He yes. says he's innocent. The young lady has to make it known what her name is now because yes. she's taken Derek Rose to court. Uh, this, the sad thing about this is Derek is starting to talk without lawyer's counsel. That's problematic because he, when he said the other day that he didn't know what the word consent means, Maya. Oh my goodness, it's time for a lawyer to grab you and grab you quickly. Brock Turner, 19-year-old standout swimmer at Stanford, uh, raped an unconscious woman. Really? Yes. He was caught in the act of sexually ass assaulting her by a dumpster. You know, uh, jury agreed and Turner was found guilty of multiple felony rape charges. Mm -hmm. Turner, though, was given a six-month jail sentence and told he could be released on good behavior in as little as three months. This thing just keeps happening over and over because of this athletic prowess. I mean, can this cycle ever be broken? Well, you know, it's really interesting because we'll have to watch what plays out with Derrick Rose because initially this started as a civil case, meaning we're pursuing dollars opposed to justice. Now we find out mid-September that criminal charges have been put on the table, which means obviously having amenity is a bit different for, for the victim. Um, and she's also not a minor right. at this point that we know of. So it's interesting. So the question becomes, was there a breakdown when we were talking dollars and cents? Because most athletes will just settle outside of court. Yes. So it doesn't get to a criminal part or it doesn't get to court and tarnish their image even more. So it'll be interesting to see how it plays out with Derrick Rose. Now, on the other side, when you talk about Brock Turner, the prosecutor did request six years for his crime. Right. But it was the judge who used their arbitrary judgment to say, this is a young man who has no criminal history. You know, it was, it was a bad choice he made. Yes, the victim was unconscious as well as intoxicated, but he didn't feel incarceration was the answer for Turner because he didn't think it would be beneficial for him because he had no history, according to him, of yeah. being improper. Not yeah. that we necessarily know of that. So it was the judge that made the call that, by the way, that Turner should only have six months in jail. But he does have to register as a sex offender. That's true, which, which is quite painful. You know, uh, I don't know if it's as well, uh, nah, nah, nobody wants to be a sex right. offender. You know, uh, there are a lot of people that would probably choose to spend more jail time than to have that on as a scar you know, a, a, a scarlet letter on you for the rest of your life. But it's interesting because the judge pretty much alluded to the fact that this young man could still have a future. Mm -hmm. So this is when you start talking about privilege. And actually, I would ask this question without trying to make it too decisive is, so if Brock Turner had, had a history of being running afoul of the law, you know, all these other issues, would the judge have been so lenient? I don't like to interject race into it, uh -huh. but we've already seen lots of college athletes that have been charged with sexual assault that have been given jail time and not the same type of, as we could say, you made a mistake. Even yeah. though we're talking about sexual assault, right. and it should never matter what your background is, you made a conscious choice a con to violate someone. And a conscious choice is not a mistake. It's so interesting to see people say, oh, I made a mistake. You had sex, you assaulted a woman who was unconscious by a dumpster. That's not a mistake. So let's take it a step further. If Brock Turner isn't at Stanford and he's a mediocre swimmer, oh, he probably ends up spending maybe a little bit more prison time, possibly. Possibly. I mean, we never know the inner workings of what goes on with his family, how much influence. Yes. Now, if you remember, interesting enough, um, privilege is interesting when it comes to dollars and cents, because if you remember the, the teen in Texas, 16-year-old who went to Walmart, stole some alcohol with yeah. his friends, drove a pickup truck, ended up killing four people because yeah. he was intoxicated more than three times the legal limit, and the defense was 
he's affluent. Yeah. So because he was affluent, a family with money who gave him all these options in life, he didn't understand what his privilege provided him with and that he could extinguish someone's life if he was irresponsible. Yeah. Interesting. So class becomes the element that is blended with great athleticism and prestigious college that you go to along with your parents backing you, you up as well. I mean, the, in the Brock Turner case, they called it, you know, he, you know, he shouldn't have to be a sex offender and he shouldn't have to do jail time mm -hmm. for getting a little action. Really? Yeah, it's an unconscious unconscious woman. Yeah, this is frustrating. You know what? Well, we're going to be closing the first segment here, but I got to look at something quickly that's going to get your blood boiling here. Mm -hmm. And I hope I can find this. This is an interesting situation and it deals with a very, it deals with a Tampa Bay Buccaneer. You know where I'm going. <laughs> Jameis Winston, now the starting quarterback of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Mm -hmm. He's been identified uh, in the sexual assaults of two women and the Florida State Chief of Police and the Dean of Students colluded to stop the investigations of Winston. Here's the interesting part about FSU's Victim Advocate Office. They've had 113 sexual assault reports in that year. Mm -hmm. And FSU's administration reported only 14 of the 113 assaults to, they only reported 14 to the federal government. These athletes are protected. Absolutely. It's the culture of winning. They generate dollars for the NCAA, which is a billion dollar business. It's not like it was 50 years ago. The money that college football, especially talking about the SEC, mm -hmm. the ACC, the money that's generated from that, it's protecting an asset at this point. Each one of those players are assets. And the list we could go through of how things have fallen apart, Aaron Hernandez. Oh. The list goes on and on how people were protected and things were not reported. But the question becomes, is the NCAA being blind to what they know is going on? Yeah, don't mess with my money. Don't I mean, it's almost money. gangster tactics protecting the ultimate blue chip athletes because they know they've got a bottom line to fulfill. You know, uh, only 17% of assaults end with an arrest. Mm -hmm. If that's not a slap in the face of women, I don't know what is. And athletes, Maya, are 20% more likely to rape than non-athletes. Now, I got about 30 seconds before we go to break. Maya, why is that? Athletes 20% more likely to rape than non-athletes. You have to put into context the fact that their entire lives they have been given a pass for poor behavior. People have looked the other way. So if someone's going to grab you and smack you in the hand and you're going to maybe do some jail time if you're, if you're not an athlete, there's a benefit to being able to provide something that people want. The NCAA is actually now being called under scrutiny because the University of Tennessee actually provides athletes that are accused with a list of attorneys that they can go to and boosters are allowed to still support them until charges are brought against them. Booster support and you've got a fund of attorneys that is superior, man. <laughs> I mean, as a victim, you're really on the downside, not to mention law enforcement. They tend to be fans. Yeah. They tend to be fans of the team of the city that they're supposed to be serving, protecting citizens so, for. So even if you're a loser, all I do is win, 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 no, no matter, matter what. what. Man, my, I got to go to break. Are sports stars above the legal system? Hey, here's some of your comments. Andy Rathjen says, I don't think it's that they get more chances after misbehaving. It's just, just that you hear about them because of the media. I feel we give them more freedom because they are celebrities. We should hold them to a higher standard due to our children looking up to them. Sandra Banks says, women are dismissed as objects when the rapist is the star athlete, Gerard. His sports career means more than the young lady's well-being. Alex Nepper says, the Stanford rape case isn't about rape culture or male privilege or sexism. It's about athlete privilege. And Charles Bingham says, it's very much a learned behavior and it's not gonna change unless we bring our boys up the right way. Hey, I wanna thank you all for your comments. I'm with Maya Kai and we'll be back shortly. Tweet me, post on Instagram or send me a message on Facebook. Let's start the conversation. Your voice is important on CounterPoint.
letter to the judge reads, Brock's life has been deeply altered forever by the events of January 17th and 18th. He will never be his happy-go-lucky self with that easygoing personality and welcoming smile. Now he barely consumes any food and eats only to exist. Those verdicts have broken and shattered him and our family in so many ways. His life will never be the one that he dreamed about and worked so hard to achieve. That is a steep price to pay for 20 minutes of action out of his 20 plus years of life. What was the reaction in the courtroom when that was read out loud in front of the victim and her family and friends? Uh, I think people were very stunned. Um, uh, there were a number of the victim's friends, uh, high school and college friends there. Uh, all of them were crying. Um, I think that this uh, is very insensitive to compare the um, problems associated with, you know, not eating your favorite food to um, being sexually assaulted. I think it shows a lack of compassion for the victim in this case. Wow, really? Welcome back to Counterpoint. Our sports stars above the legal system, sports analyst Maya Kai joins us at the Counterpoint. Maya. Oof. Gotta take a deep breath on that, Gerard. That last clip, you, he's not eating well anymore because he was accused of rape. Really? Well, he was found guilty yeah. of rape. And yes, there's a shame that comes with that. What was interesting about that statement, it obviously, their lawyer didn't have a conversation about the father, what he should not put out there, because what you fail to understand is the emotional and mental distress of a victim who has to relive that and think about that and be shamed as well. Yeah. So that's, that's very one-sided. If nothing else, the family of Brock Turner has to suffer the embarrassment that their son is a rapist. But by the way, if you notice in the media, it was Brock Turner, former Stanford swimmer, released from jail. Not actually labeled as a rapist as many other people would be in that situation when you're found guilty. You're no longer allegedly an, a, rap a rapist. You have been convicted you are a rapist. So the narrative shifts and once again it's not what you say sometimes it's what you omit exactly and the omission is a scar against that woman and all females on planet earth you know do these people need babysitters i've always wondered i'm a close friend of mine does this for a living maya uh she is a she's kind of a um scandal type she's almost like a uh, what's the character in Olivia Scandal? Pope? Yeah, she's almost like an Olivia Pope, okay. where she her job, and she has maybe seven or eight clients now, her job is to babysit professional athletes. She makes sure that they get limousine service after they're at the club. <laughs> she she keeps an eye out for them. Uh, she makes sure that they're, they don't get in, in situations that are compromising. Should more athletes say, you know what, I know I'm crazy. I know I'm off the chain. I like to party. I'm going to disobey my sports team and my, and my owners, and I'm going to hang out at 4.35 in the morning as opposed to 2 o'clock curfew. Should some of these pro athletes, you know, does Ryan Lochte need a babysitter? <laughs> Ryan Lotte needs a, a whole just intervention about <laughs> honesty. Um, but yet again, that gets back to living high on the horse. And he, I, you know, I don't know why he went the route he went. It makes no sense to me. Yeah. Um, he should have known there were consequences. And, and it has been at this point because now, obviously, he's been suspended as they try to figure out what's the next move. Because technically, he still has years under his belt that he could swim. But his legacy, I mean, he was already behind Michael Phelps, which he is the most successful swimmer behind Michael Phelps yeah. for the U.S. And his legacy may be over because I think a lot of Americans were not happy with the outcome and the embarrassment of that. That was in its way an international incident. I don't know that his, you know, his mother is kind of his gatekeeper yeah. and that was the one time she wasn't there to kind of keep him on the straight and narrow. Mm. We talk about athletes and, and you know, I think your friend's job, I've said a long time ago, there are some people that though examples have been set before them about what can happen when you decide to live as if you're a normal person when you're no longer, you're an athlete and that comes with a lot of different set of issues. Yeah. I'll be honest, there are even women who look to create those set of issues for you, whether they are trying to make a career out of becoming someone who's gonna have a baby by you. Yeah. There's all these things that people are looking at you, you have a target on your back. To come up. Girl, to, I'm going to get him. I, I'm hate get to, him. <laughs> I hate to say it, but I do believe what she does. I said a long time ago, you need someone who's going to do a background check, who's going to you know, really kind of keep you on the straight and narrow because there's lots of mistakes to be made. It's just, it's the lifestyle, and I, I think it's, it's hard for us mere mortals to even begin to fathom 
how much pressure is on these individuals when, especially as a man, it's not like this for women at all. It's not, see, we don't, we don't get it this good. But for a guy, you have people coming at you left and right. Yeah. So whether it's a beautiful woman or rather it's that friend from your childhood who may not be the best person for you to associate with. Yeah. There's a lot of different variable here that they really have to work through. So yes, I do believe that at some point, someone who can kind of help you figure out and navigate, navigate through this yeah. is actually not a bad idea. You know what was interesting? I was watching the town hall meeting in Chicago from the undefeated. I mm -hmm. believe it was ESPN series ESPN, called yes. the undefeated. Derek Rose's bodyguard was on panel at this yes. town hall, yes. and he pretty much throws Derek right under the bus. He said, "Derek, kind of wow, y'all. Derek yes, likes to hang did. out at them ratchet clubs." I was like, "Wow, your bodyguard is like." ratting you out on national TV. And so that doesn't bode well for Derek as we move into a whole new no. chapter in no. his life. Ben Roethlisberger, oh, come on, my Kai. You talk <laughs> about being a powerful quarterback for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, I'm not accusing him. I'm not saying that he did or didn't do what was what he was accused of. But that whole situation kind of went away. It did go away. I mean, it has a lot to do, like I said, power and privilege. And of course, anytime you have anything that's potentially circum circumstantial, it's my word against your word. There was nobody but you and I in that restroom. She can say he, he assaulted me. I can say, no, she was consenting. And the question is, how can you prove that? So I think Ben Roethlisberger, to a way, kind of gotten out because it yeah. was the burden of truth, unfortunately, for the victim. Yeah, yeah. That made it, that was his out, to be but, honest. But for Corey Beatty at, and those other three Vanderbilt players, it didn't play out so well, did it? Because mm, not so what, much. What, what, what did he, what, what, what did, uh, what, and, and I'll never forget this scene. I love this scene in uh, Friday <laughs> when uh, Chris Tucker's character says, did they, they said they had you on tape. And then Ice Cube's character says, they don't have me on tape. They had those young men on tape in the hallway, dragging ladies out, um, the young man, you know, Corey Beatty. But here's the thing, Corey Beatty gets accused but actually gets a prison sentence, at, you know, from Vanderbilt. Um, Ray Rice clocks his girlfriend at the time. Fiance, in, fiance not just, not in the, And then she marries him afterwards. Yes. Wow. Yes. So, the whole family must have been on Ray Rice's payroll. You know, I, you, seriously, I can punch your daughter out in a, I mean, it wasn't like a push, was it? It no. was like he was hitting a grown a, man. It's just, it's unfortunate. I mean, she insists that that's not the nature of their relationship. I'm not there, I don't know. It makes no sense to me that it would escalate to that point. I have no idea what the argument was about, but the evidence was there, and that's really what got the NFL and Roger Goodall in a quandary because the evidence was there and they made a decision prior to that. Actually, Goodall said, I made the decision based on the character of Ray Rice that preceded him. We had never had complaints. He was very involved in the community. He was an upstanding person up to that point. He said, I gave him the benefit of the doubt. Is it any different than what the judge did in California for Brock Turner? Good point. And then we started seeing a whole bunch of public service announcements from the NFL with all of the NFL players acting as if they're the best thing since sliced bread, saying that I respect women and I would never put my hands on a woman. They even had some of the NFL players tearing up. Oh, my goodness, this is horrible. You know, I let's mean, look at Butch Jones. Yeah. You know where I'm going with this, too? Let's go with Maya it. Maya Kai, <laughs> Butch Jones, coach at Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. So, it, once again, he scolded one of his players for being on the side of a woman who was assaulted, saying, that's not right. Meanwhile, the coach steps in and said, oh, got to protect my players. It keeps happening over and over Maya, is there a way to break this cycle or do we just love sports that much? We love sports, but I mean, breaking the cycle is, is, is a commitment that starts from the minute a kid steps into being an athlete because the privilege begins the minute their talent comes to the surface and someone realizes there's something special about this kid. There really is. So the issue becomes we have to change the way that we think and the privileges we, we give people to get away with things. Johnny Menzel is a good example of, he has been down the path of destruction for a really long time, and he finally hit the wall. Yeah. He really has. Johnny football. And he had to learn the hard way. I mean, so we have to begin to say, the privilege is there, no matter what the background is of that person, what are we gonna do to change the fact that winning means so much in this country, because one, it makes money, two, it's glorious. I mean, there's a lot that goes into it, and it really puts women in a bad position to say, one, 
why should I even come forward? Because I already know it's gonna come with a lot of issues and problems depending on what school that I'm at. They may not believe me, the investigation might be tampered with. I mean, it comes with a lot of strife for them. The question becomes, do I really want to do this? Because yeah. I might get demonized because I had been drinking and I had been partying as an average college student may do or whatever the case may be. It's our culture within this society that we have to adjust how we're biased towards people who we think are above everyone else uh -huh. and how we will penalize other people who don't have the same things. So I, I, in some ways, Maya, I'm glad that I was never a blue chip athlete. Uh, ran track in college, did fairly well. Uh, went to Division Three nationals, you know, uh, four by 100 meter relay, and as a hurdler, uh, got a little shine, you know, ate well, good meals, you know. Uh, a few females chased me for a, for a minute by half a semester, okay? But it never got to the point, because it's Div 3 now. Uh, it wasn't like it was Div 1. It wasn't <laughs> like I was going to be able to quit college and make 15 million. So imagine Division 3. Imagine what it feels like to be Division 1. Imagine that. Imagine when you literally are a god. And if you're, depending on the school you're at, you are a god to other students, to alumni, and if you, like say you come from a program where football is king. I went to Iowa, football's king. The luckily we haven't had too many issues, but things have happened mm -hmm. along the way. But I've seen, I had friends, I saw how they were treated, how they were elevated, like they were something special. And many times their head, heads were turned when they would do things that weren't appropriate. Yeah, yeah. Because it's all about the culture of winning. I went to a parking lot of a, I won't mention the day of one school, but I went to the parking lot before a football practice. I saw, these blue chip athletes getting out of Corvettes, BMWs, and I'm like, really? And a lot of them didn't come from families that had the wherewithal to have that kind of vehicle, right. you know? And so we see that, uh, you know, here, you and I, we're trying to save the world today. We're trying to make people moral, but you know what? Ugh, is it, is it, should we just leave it at that? Boys will be boys, or should Maya Kai and Gerard try to expose this thing? It has to be. It has to be exposed because if we don't expose it and hold everyone accountable from their parents to the coaches to administrators, if we don't put their feet to the flame, just like if people are not prosecuted and they don't do jail time, then the behavior continues. Maya, I gotta, I gotta leave it there. You know, all of us could use a two-minute warning or a 24-second clock to think before we do something harmful. Athletes aren't any better than the next person, but sometimes our reverence to them borders on blasphemy. Sports heroes make us feel good, and we can live vicariously through their victories and curse their losses, but a high moral code should always be at the forefront. Rape, cheating, dogfighting, and punching a girlfriend are never acceptable. So don't get it twisted when your favorite athlete has violent tendencies. I want to thank you all for watching Counterpoint. I need you all to stay positive. Please keep your head up and always be encouraged to voice your counterpoint. Have a great week.